Hey guys, it's Lee Hoy here. I am coming to you from my hotel room in Gardner, Montana. I'm on the road until February 11th up here, leading photography workshops. So today's temperature hit minus 35 degrees was our lowest, that's Fahrenheit, while we were out today. And I thought, you know, what better topic for this week's video than the clothes that I like to wear in extreme weather to help keep me comfortable when I'm doing my photography. So now one thing I wanna put your mind at ease, there's not gonna be any time lapse of me getting dressed, you perverts. I don't, you don't need to see that. I don't need to see that. Nobody needs to see that. So tonight what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through some of my gear, how I use it, why I use it, and what I like about it. Because when it's really cold outside, you run into many challenges, right? And the reality is we wanna focus on capturing great images. We don't want the weather to prevent that. So with that being said, let's jump right into the kind of clothes and items that I like to use to stay warm. Hey, nature photographers, I'm Lee Hoy, OM System Ambassador, photography workshop instructor for Wildside Nature Tours and Precision Camera and Video, and contributing author for the Journal of Wildlife Photography. Here we go. Um, and you know what? This room is so dark. What is it about modern hotel rooms? Why the hell won't they give us some lights? I mean, there's a few lamps, there's nothing overhead. So I, I ask you to forgive me about the lighting. I've only got one portable light with me. And I'm gonna walk you through though this equipment right now that I like to use. And what I want you to do is I want you to look here on the bed. And I got a confession to make. I'm a little OCD and a perfectionist. If I'm in a room by myself with a double bed, I truly lay out my clothes as you see here. I lay them out in the order that I put them on. Now, I know what you're thinking, Lee, come on, do you really do that? 100% guaranteed if I have the room, if I have the space, because it makes it so much easier to ensure that I'm not missing anything or forgetting something. All right, so let's jump right into the clothes that I like to wear, and we're gonna start from the inside out. I'm not gonna show you my underwear, that's a whole separate channel for reviews, all right? But let me tell you a little bit about my socks. Now, I've tested a wide variety of socks. I want socks that are gonna stay up, stay warm, not compress too much. The more your socks get compressed, the less warmth they'll hold in. So you're gonna wear socks out once. If you wear them twice, you're gonna find that your feet will get colder. And what I like to do, um, is test a variety of socks so that when I come to you with information, you know that you can trust what I have to say. This is darn tough. I know there's Smart Wool, other brands, believe me, I've tried them. I have fallen on darn tough. They are tough. They last, they're durable, they're warm. For winter wear, you're gonna want boot cut. You want the tall ones. You do not want them sliding down into your boot because you'll have to lift your britches leg, your thermals to pull them up. That lets out heat, okay? So the first thing we're gonna put on are our socks. And you want good, durable, warm socks. Darn tough, they're not cheap at like REI. If you buy three pair, you'll get a discount on them. You know, I can't travel anywhere without some of my wife's hair following me. Come on, Mel. So, I, and I assure you that's not beard hair and it's definitely not mine. So when we, when we go out, we want a fresh pair of socks, okay? And even more important, a better way to keep our feet warm. And you know what I like to add to my socks? Hot hands, toe warmers. I don't like the entire foot warmers. Don Wilson, a friend of mine, a photographer with Wildside, and I both agree. The downside with the full foot is inevitably it's gonna bunch up, it's gonna pull your sock down, it's gonna feel very uncomfortable, it's gonna hurt, and you don't want that. So you're gonna put the toe ones on, Okay, so I get my socks on, I, I unpeel and I stick it up towards the top of my foot. I had run out of these one time because I'd been loaning a client some and I will tell you, I had a day where it was very cold, I did not have these and I noticed it dramatically. What's funny is when you put these on your feet, your feet are gonna stay warmer and you may not really realize how much warmer they're staying. But if you don't have them, you will notice how cold your feet are, okay? So combining good socks, darn tough, with the hot hands toe warmers is a good recipe for keeping those feet warm, okay? So let's go to our next item. So this is my thermal shirt, and I have a confession to make. I hate wearing thermal shirts. I don't like the way they feel on your body. They grab every hair on your body. 
Some of you all may not have to worry about that, but as folks like this, we have to. But the reality is, is they are critical for keeping you warm. So here's what I recommend, because quite often when we're photographing in extreme cold, you're sitting still for a long time. So this is the Cabela's or Bass Pro brand, and it's, it's the heavyweight, okay? What the heavyweight is, this is for extreme cold, non-active, something like a hunter would wear if you're sitting in a blind or behind a rifle for a long time without moving. It's thicker, okay? Here's a tip. Every shirt, every jacket we're going to look at of mine, they have thumb loops, okay? So when I put this on, my thumb goes through here. The beauty of this is there's nothing worse than pulling a jacket on over shirts and that sleeve getting bunched up and it's uncomfortable, right? So everything that goes on my arms or over my arms that is arm length has to have a thumb loop, okay? So this is the heavyweight for extreme cold, uh, non-active. And if you go into a Bass Pro or Cabela's, you'll find that they have those categories. They might have... Um, you know, medium active, medium cold. I want to make sure I stay very warm, okay? I'm planning for, you know, 10 degrees and below. Frankly, if it gets around 10 degrees, it's not feeling that cold if it's been minus 15 earlier, okay? So this is my, this is my thermal shirt. It goes on next after my socks. All right, your thermal long johns, okay? This is the Cabela's brand. And this is what is known as the extreme cold active. Frankly, I find that my legs don't get as cold as say my arms might, right? Or my torso. If you keep your torso warm, the rest of your body is gonna stay warmer. So the beauty of the um, extreme cold active is you have a thin lower leg so that it's not getting bunched, uh, bunched up in your boot or boot up in your bunch, which I suspect is way worse but you don't want to get it bunched up. And I don't, I don't like having real tight constriction around my calves. So this gives me some mobility on my lower leg, but it has the warm uppers, okay? So for my, th for my thermal bottoms, I want extreme cold active. And that's gonna give you, again, the heavier weight upper and thin lower. It, it goes in three stages. I've, I've never had my legs be uncomfortable wearing these. I would love to try a onesie that had the extreme cold upper because sometimes, you know, when you're, when you're bent over and these things start to sag a little or whatever, it's annoying. But I have not found a onesie that would transition from um, extreme cold inactive to extreme cold active on the bottom. But so those are my thermal underwear. Those are going to go on. And you want to put your socks on before this so that as you pull them on, this goes over the sock and heat will not escape then. It's gonna go, if it's gonna come out of your sock, it's gonna go right up this britches leg, okay? So that's important. Now when it's super cold, I like to have a second layer on my bottom, okay? And that is gonna be cool, K-U-H-L pants. The beauty of cool, and you can find these at REI, is that they're designed for mountaineering. And the cold winter pants are thicker. Okay? And you're going to want to buy these a, at least a size bigger than normal because you're going to be putting them over thermal, underwear, and you, you don't want things too tight. The beauty of the cool pants, and this, this is the Deceptor. Okay, You can see right there, this is the Deceptor pant. Because they're designed for mountaineering, you see that stretch? Incredibly durable. I've never had a pair of cool pants tear. And then I like to use, because I don't want these sliding down, I like to use a belt, but I hate really stiff belts. So instead, um, the brand I go with is the same brand I wear for airports, Arcade. This is an Arcade belt. It's plastic, so you can wear it through airports with no problem. Little tip, a friend of mine, Nathan Hall, taught me this. One of the few good things Nathan's ever taught me. Put your belt on in your pants before you put them on. It's so much easier. And he's right, it really is. But the cool KUHL Deceptor pants, stretchy, um, they, they're not too tight and they're going to give you plenty of room. You go to shoot, kneel down, you've got some maneuverability in here, okay? Um, you don't want the tapered. Um, I don't think these are tapered. I don't like the tapered. Again, I don't like things bunching up. And both my thermal underwear and these pants are going to go inside my boot, okay? They're going to go on inside the boot. So KUHL, I know REI carries them as, long, as well as other places. So my mid-layer 
is going to be a, a down vest. I like a vest. I don't want a long sleeve. I don't want my arms getting too bunched up. I want to have maneuverability for photography. So this vest, this is my first trip to try it. I've noticed it's really made a big difference for me when I've been out in the field, keeping me nice and warm. Um, it, it goes on after my thermal underwear. Okay, this is going to go on next because what you'll see, I want to pull over this. So you want to zip it up. And if it's going to be, you know, for me, if it gets around zero or below, it's going to get zipped up fully. And that's why, if you wonder why my beard looks so crazy and my mustache, I've been out all day in minus 35. The warmest it got was zero while we were out. And when you get everything all bunched up, well, you know what? Your beard and your mustache, it just ain't going to look right, Clark. Um, so, again, I don't care what brand down vest. I, I, this is warmer than synthetics. But obviously, this can't be your outer layer because if you're going to lay down in the snow to photograph, you don't want this getting wet. So down is for mid-layer for me. If you know you're never going to kneel down or lay down, I've seen people out here wearing it as their outer, but, but they do not. you don't want to wet snow. You're not going to want something that's, that could get this damp because it's not going to hold warmth like it once did. So Patagonia down vest, nice mid-layer. So Lee, tell us what's your outer layer. Well, I'm trying something new this year. I'm going with the Obermeyer. Let me see here. I know the, the brand is on here somewhere. And they're not paying me squat, by the way. Nothing you see in here has been sent to me for free. Nothing you're seeing here do they know I'm using. Uh, but Obermeyer and others, if you see that I'm reviewing this and giving a review, good review, send me a free pair. Why? No. Um, I like for you guys to know that because I'm not getting paid for this. And even if I were, if you can't tell right now, I'm going to get, this is a no BS zone, baby. I'm going to tell you the truth. If it sucks, I'm going to let you know it sucks. So I just got these Obermeyer uh, bibs. I had been using pants, but every now and then when I'd lay down in snow, if I had to back up and, uh, and I had a shorter jacket, snow might get up in, in there. And that's, we do not want snow getting on the inside. It's not good. It's not going to help you stay warm. So I thought, what if I went with bibs? Well, obviously you're going to size your bibs to go over not only your thermal underwear, but your second layer on there. And the reason I went with bibs with overalls is I knew it would stay up better. You want to make sure, by the way, you want to make sure men and women, you want to make sure that these can come down quickly or easily, whatever way, if you got to go to the restroom when you're out and about, because it happens, right? So I like these. Um, they stay up well. They've been very warm. And you can see the knees are dirty. I've been shooting in these, okay? The knees are already dirty out there. I've been kneeling down in the snow. I've been getting some shots down low. And what I've been very impressed with is the warmth. And I want to stand up and you just want to brush snow off, right? You do not want to have problems getting wet and damp. So this was a really good pair. They were having a sale recently where if you bought a jacket, you got these on half price. I've been very impressed with them. Good zipper in the front, has some nice, uh, when you look at zippers on your outer layers, you want, you want really good seams. You don't want to put a lens cloth or a memory card or a battery in here and have moisture get in these pockets. So you want to look for nice rubber. You want to get really well done seams on your zippers. That's going to be super important. All right. So, and then what I want in the, in the pants, this is very important. So I want this separate legging with the rubber skirt. Why is that? I want to be able to pull this over my boot. Okay. So I usually put these on, then I'll pull them up, put a boot on. I'll show you my boots in a minute. And then I pull this down over the boot. So this is going to help keep snow moisture out of your pants. And then this is going to slide down. Now it's got a, it's got a snap and uh, Velcro and a zipper down low. So if you got really big boots and you need a little more room to get them on, you can. I have found that these are more than big enough and they go over my boots really nicely. So Obermeyer, they are um, generally like a skiing brand. I just passed the, uh, the, their home office up here in uh, Bozeman the other day. But so you gotta be careful about buying really bright neon colors. That's the downside about some ski wear. It can be good because it can be for active and durable, but they often have silly bright colors that's not gonna work for wildlife photography. But I found these in black and was very happy with them. So far, the performance is a 10, right? Been really happy with these. So let's review. I've got my thermal underwear, okay? Oh, socks and underwear, thermal underwear, tops and bottoms, down vest, my cool pants, okay? 
Then I'm going to go with uh, Obermeyer overalls. Well, Lee, tell us what's next. I'm glad you asked. So this is my new Obermeyer jacket. I had a Helly Hansen, which was a lot more expensive than this, but it was a short. Had a lot of the same features, kept me very warm. But I thought, what if I went with a longer jacket? I would kind of avoided longer jackets, afraid it was going to limit my mobility. I am very happy to tell you it doesn't. And the beauty of the longer jacket is that it is going to prevent me from getting a lot of snow up where it doesn't belong. Okay. So what are some of the features that when I'm shopping for a jacket, it has to have? I will not buy it without it. Well, number one, I said when I'm putting on my sleeve, it's got to have the thumb. Okay. So this has this really nice sleeve where my thumb comes in. And I want Velcro here because when you have gloves on, trying to undo snaps and everything is a nightmare. So again, I really want this thumb. That's going to keep everything from sliding up. So I have my thermal underwear shirt with the thumb hole. Now my jacket has it, okay? And I want Velcro on the sleeve. I want to be able to tighten this around my glove. I don't tighten it until I get my glove liner on. So I've got, the, I've got this. Here's some other features I really want. Just like my outer pants, this has a rubber grommet, basically, right? And it's got snaps. So it's gonna snap in the front, and this is gonna help keep that snow out. So it's gonna form a barrier around your lower body to help keep heat from escaping and help keep the cold from coming in. A lot of people get all excited about these pockets on the inside. I don't, I don't put stuff in them. I don't wanna to have to unzip my coat to reach in and get stuff. So interior pockets, no matter how big, how sturdy, yeah, they're cool. I don't give a crap. I don't use them. I don't want to have to unzip and let heat out. I don't really care about that feature. I care about this bottom. I care about the zipper. Everybody goes in a store and tries on a jacket. You don't have gloves on, okay, or mittens. How well can you get your zipper closed and open using your gloved hands, not your bare hands? A lot of designers use zippers that are way too small and inferior quality, and it makes it really hard. I also, I'm not as big a fan. Oh, they got these silly zippers. Um, and this is true for most coats nowadays, where when you zip, you've got two zippers, and you could zip them both up, and then it separates at the bottom. I hate that. I don't need that. Um, and this one has it, but I haven't had a problem with it. Some coats you have a problem with it. Overall, I would say the weight of this jacket, it's probably just a hair bit heavier than I would like, but the warmth has been incredible. Today at minus 35, I had no problems. Stood outside watching wolves and bison and elk and stuff without any worries. When I, when I look at my pockets on the exterior of your coat, I am going to put in things like chapstick, uh, lens claws, a few little items like that that you don't want to fall out. So you want, you want pockets where you're going to put your gloves in, but you don't really want to store stuff in there because it's too easy to pull your hands out and not feel stuff falling out. So I like good elevation pockets for my gloved hands to go into, and then I want good secure pockets to put things in on the exterior. So I like two separate pockets on the outside, okay? And I'll put these, put this one here in a minute and show you again, dark colors, right? I mean, I'm not winning any fashion awards, let's be honest, but I like, I like dark colors for this. The hood, it's, it's because it's a ski jacket. It's it's in like a snow, uh, snowboarder. It's a little bigger than I would like. Okay. But I don't really use it. Um, I'll tell you what I like to wear on top of my head and what I hope to get at some point. So it's a little bigger than I would like, but I don't really need it. Okay. Um, if I had a real wet snow, I might, and I might pull it up then, but this one's really too big for what I care about. But again, I'm, I'm not going to need it, particularly after I upgrade what I'm going to use later. Okay. So again, very happy with this jacket. And honestly, this jacket was extremely affordable. I think this jacket was under $400. My Heli Hansen came in around $650 probably, something like that. But, um, I went, I went a size bigger than I needed to give me plenty of maneuverability when I, when I'm all layered up. So that's my Obermeyer jacket. When I'm getting dressed in the morning, I'll get all this gear on and I want to make sure my cameras are ready to go, whatever bags I'm going to take out with me, drinks, food, whatever, that's all ready to go because I don't want to put the final items on until I'm ready to walk out the door because it's really going to warm you up. And what happens is you're, many of you are going to ignore me and you're going to have your hotel room too warm. 
and you get on three layers, okay? You put on a hat, your gloves, and you're sweating. You don't want to sweat, but you're going to do it because you're going to ignore me because you're not going to believe me or you're going to think, I don't want to sleep when it's cool. Fine, do it. I don't give a crap, but you're the one that's going to get cold. So you're going to get sweaty and you're going to go outside and you're going to be too warm and you're going to get in a van or a car. And you're going to crank the heat up too much, okay? Eventually, because you're going to take your gloves off, you're going to take your hat off, you're going to unzip your coat, and then you're going to get too chilly before you undo that. And then you're going to crank the heat up in the car, fogging the windows, fogging up your camera, whatever it might be. Instead of just bundling where your clothes for the outside temperatures, but by God, don't heat the car to 70 degrees, okay? You're defeating the purpose. And I promise you, you're going to suffer if you do that. If you start sweating, you can really get chilled. So we want to keep ourselves from sweating. So you don't want to be final dressed until you're ready to walk out the door and stand outside, okay? So dress for the, dress for the outside so that you can photograph and keep the temperature on the inside as low as, your, as possible. It will really help you a lot. How do I know this? Ask me about all the clients who don't listen and their hands are freezing. They can't hold their camera. You know, it's one thing to gauge the temperature of your hands standing outside without holding metal cameras, right? Without wind chill, right? And, and so you really have to understand the importance of doing this correctly, all right? But having said that, let me talk about my current hat. So I have tried many different beanies and being bald, keeping your head warm is critical, okay? Cole hats, again at REI, are one of the warmest beanies I've ever worn. I had to, I bought a new one the other day because this one's now going on a couple years old. I've washed it a few times. And if you feel it, it feels thinner than a brand new one. So this is my in-town hat with my awesome horned lizard pin, right? I mean, I'm Texan. I love horned lizards. Well, this one's newer and it's extremely thick. So today at minus 35, having this on my head, only no problems. Honestly, if it's about 20 and above, it's almost too warm. Okay. But this thing is super warm. They have different colors. As you can tell, I love black, whites, grays. My favorite birds in the world are black, white, grays. Just rock it, right? And coal, absolutely. And they're not that expensive. And they are ungodly warm. I've tried many other brands you can ignore. Well, I have this. I don't care. I've tried them all, man. Um, this is phenomenal. I love coal. And if you just feel it, you'll feel a very tight weave. It, you know what? There is a downside to them. When I have it over my ear, it's so thick it can make it a little harder to hear wildlife or clients, okay? But it's that warm. It really keeps you super warm. All right. Let's talk gloves. Once you start getting below 10 degrees, one pair of gloves probably isn't going to cut it. Um, you know, and there's different situations. If you have wet snow, glove liners, they're probably not going to work, you know? Uh, and I understand everybody worries about having some maneuverability, dexterity with your hands when it comes to photography. So I, I'm more worried about warmth first and dexterity second because when your hands are too cold, I've had them so cold I couldn't tell if I was pressing the shutter button. That's not comfortable. That's not fun. So let's talk about the Heat Company gloves. The Heat Company gloves were designed originally for the Austrian military. And used to, I had to buy them overseas. When I bought my first pair, I had to go through the, the overseas. Now, Chaz Glatzer, super nice guy, Canon Explorer of Light, he's now an American distributor. They have multiple forms or types of the liners. This is the Merino Wool Pro, okay? So they have different charts. Like, do you want a liner that is great in super extreme cold? Good with wind? What about wet? Right, like if it were raining, you wouldn't want to wear these. What I love about the Heat Company are several features. Number one, you see this little pouch on the top, right? This pouch is perfect for putting in a hot hands hand warmer, okay? You want to put this in before you leave for the day because if you wait until your hands get cold, this doesn't help you catch up. This keeps your hands from getting cold. So as soon as I, as soon as I wake up in the morning, I pop this pack open, stick it in there, set my gloves down, let it start warming couple of other features on the Heat Company gloves. I like the fact that they have this little carabiner. They come with it and I can clip my gloves together because how often have you lost? If you're shooting at Yellowstone in winter and you drive around, you will see a glove stuck on something in the park because somebody lost their glove. I saw a beanie, a glove, and we had one shoe. Not a really good outfit, but a start, right? So I want to clip them together when not in use. I want pouches on the, the back of my hands 
for the hot hands hand warmers and they have the little rubbery things on here to let you use a phone screen. It's not always perfect, but it's not bad. And again, if I, I would rather my hands be warm than me have to use my phone easily. So these liners, so I'm gonna put my glove on, I mean, I'm gonna put my jacket on, put my thumb through the hole, then this is gonna go on, okay? And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that Velcro on my, on my jacket and I'm gonna close it over this. Completely sealed, heat is not escaping anywhere. To, to about one degree or so, I can use just this usually. If, if the moisture in the air is higher content, I might need to go to the mitten over this, but for the most part, this is my go-to. It'll it, This is pretty resistant. I'll put my hands in snow and I can do this and I'm generally fine. You don't wanna put it in water and if it's a really, really wet snow, you're, you're not gonna to wanna to just go with this for long. But I have no problem using any of the controls on my OM system cameras, okay? Great pair of gloves, durable fingertips, I'm pretty hard on my gear. I can generally get at least one, two seasons out of these. Some people that are more careful can get two. I don't, I don't care. I'd rather spend money and have good, reliable gear like the Heat Company gloves. Okay, so these are the liners, the Merino Pro liners. But on the website, you can look at all the different types of liners they have and choose what you think might work best for you. But let's take a look at the shells. All right, so these are the Heat Company. You can see their little logo here. Shells. You can buy an all-in-one with the liner built inside the shell. I personally think that's a horrible idea because I only want to put the shell on when I need it. I can use the liners most of the time without the shells. But what I really like about these shells, again, carabiner to keep them attached so we're not losing them, okay? Let me grab one of my liners here. Let me put a liner on and I'll show you how these work together and the, the great features that you'll find on both, okay? So here's my liner, all right? They have two different drawstrings. So right here, okay, at the end is a good drawstring. And then right here at the end of your hand, at the beginning of your wrist, they have another drawstring. All this is gonna help keep, um, it's all gonna keep heat from escaping. On the gloves, on the, on the top, they have another pouch. We're gonna put our hot hands hand warmers in there, okay? That's where that's gonna go. You can double up. And at minus 35, my hands never got too cold today. And the beauty of this is even if you use the magnetic, um, the earth magnets in these gloves, so many things nowadays you buy it have magnets, they're worthless, right? That they, they don't work at all. Well, what I love about these, when I flip these back, and whether it be for the fingers or the thumb, you'll see the thumb has the same thing. Listen to that. This is too. Ex this is expensive. Not bad. I think this is around. I think it's on sale for 180 or something like that. I don't know. Look at the website, the Heat Company. Um, so I'm gonna put this on. Okay. So I generally put my left hand on first because I'm right-handed, and it's a little easier for me to do it in the reverse. So this is how I often like to shoot. I have my thumb sticking out of the liner. Uh, out of the shell, I have my fingers sticking sticking out of the shell, secured on the back with the magnets. I have another uh, hot hands hand warmer in here. Now I'm gonna pull this drawstring right here. That's gonna give me a nice tight secure fit, okay, right behind my hand. Then I'm gonna pull this one even further back. That's gonna cinch this and then there's a little Velcro to put that on, okay? That way there's nothing flopping around, okay? This one I can put down, and now I can shoot like this. When, I, when If my hands get extremely cold, I will pull the shell down. I can even pull it over my thumb, and I have photographed doing this. Is it as easy as just plain gloves? Well, hell no, duh. But it sure beats being miserable, okay? And I've been out at minus 38 last year here in Yellowstone for an hour and a half because the bison had got in the hot springs. They were covered in hoar frost. Well, here, take a look at this picture. Yeah, there you go. Pretty cool, huh? So, I normally don't zipper. I normally don't close the zipper on the shell. Um, honestly, I have short fingers and I find it's a little hard to close it for me, but most of the time it's, I, th I don't think I'd probably need to close that unless I was gonna be outside below minus 20 for a very long time, okay? Um, they just do a great job. And if you keep your whole body warm, your hands stay warmer as well. So these are, I think these work great. 
you'll do a follow the website on getting the measurements. I wish I'd probably gotten mine one side. I probably measured a little tight. I wish I'd had a little more room because when I, when I take my fingers out, it's a little tight right here, okay? So don't pull the tape measure super tight. I probably had it a little too tight and I probably, I think these are size 10s and I probably need to order size 11s just to get my hand a little more room right here at the corners. But these are super good gloves. They're gonna keep your hands warm. You'll be shooting a long time with these, okay? Now, for those of you that like to look around the background of a video, you weirdos, you may have noticed this little can sitting back here. This is Faultless Magic Static Remover. I despise static electricity and it annoys the hell out of me. And I can't stand the snap, crackle, pop, even if it's in my bowl of cereal, right? Which I don't like cereal either. So, uh, they don't have a can though of get rid of your cereal. Um, they have Faultless Magic Static Remover. So if you do get it, I just spray lightly. You don't want it to get damp. And presto, the static electricity is gone. I don't know why I can't stand that feeling on my body with my clothes having static, but this, and it, you probably can't fly with this as it's an aerosol can, so you probably want to pick it up wherever you land, so it's not that expensive. You know, get what you need and, and use it and then get rid of it. Well, those are the clothes I like to wear outside. Those are the things that keep me warm and allow me to keep shooting a long time. Now, I told you at some point I want to replace this. What I plan to get at some point, the Inuits um, make these, is a fur hat, the outside being harbor seal and the inside being sea otter. It has to be legally collected, only the Inuits can do that and some other tribes I believe in the Pacific Northwest so that it has to be, you need to make sure that it's all on the up and up. And you know, I'm from West Texas and if the thought of me wearing a fur hat bothers you, I don't care because it's the warmest product out there. So I like this, the problem with this is it's not really gonna protect me if it's damp, right? And, and the the hoods on most jackets cover your eyes too much. So what I want is a hat that, that'll work at any temperature, keep me waterproof. That's why I want the Harbor Seal Outer. And then one of the warmest furs out there is the Sea Otter. So that's one of my upgrades I have coming soon. I hope this video has been helpful. Tomorrow's supposed to be another cold day, but not quite as cold as, as we had today. And stay warm when you're out there shooting. Capture some great images. Here's a couple from Yellowstone in winter. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.